Hello everyone, and welcome back to my video channel. At this stage, the question is, how to solve the problem of getting the intersected camouflage in an easy way. We will do a thorough a method called progressive masking. Let us see what it is and why to use it. I know many demonize the use of patifix for masking. But as with many other things, it's just a matter of know how to use it. We also need a hard board. Make small blobs of patifix and roll them to achieve some worms, about 2 to 3 millimeters in diameter. The advantage of patifix is that it's quite hard and keeps the shape easily. Then cut small squares form a low adherent tape. Gently stick the patifix on the surface of the model to get the camouflage you want. For this scheme, the whole surface should be more or less split in 50% base color and 50% first camouflage color. Avoid pressing down the patifix on the surface, but keep the worms in their shape and do not care if they do not perfectly fill the gaps on details. Use the tape to progressively mark the areas to be masked, to avoid getting confused on the large surface of the whole model. Now cut larger squares of tape and start sticking it on the patifix to fill all gaps. In narrow corners you may also cut individual pieces of tape in a round shape to ease the job. I sometimes use two kind of tape. The pinkish one is more gentle on paints, but more rigid. While the yellowish one is more sticky, and I use it to keep in place the other tape on rounded shapes. This kind of masking may look tedious, but it you will guess that once masked, your paint job will be far easier and sharp, compared to a stressful freehand painting attempt. Or at least, it works well with this kind of camouflage pattern. Are you ready to paint the first color? With the progressive masking method, the first color to be painted is the most similar to the base color, both as hue and lightness level. And so, compared to the dunkel gel, the closest color is the light olive green the first mixed. With olive green, Naples yellow and white of the SDW shading colors, plus crystal lock. Or with army green, yellow gray and white plus a bit of water, for the essential colors. Now two more rules. While spraying, keep the airbrush perpendicular to any single plate. Spray constantly at a fixed distance from the model. Let's start painting with the essential colors. Notice that the paint is denser compared to acrylics from other brands in airbrushed condition. With the essential colors, it's no matter. And it is very good whenever you have a masking in place because it avoids the paint to leak away. The actual painting is no story. Stay perpendicular, keep the distance, spray constantly one side to the other, and it is done. This is the result of spraying with those rules and the essential colors over the rounded shape of the patifix. You get a clean, gently graded edge. No paint leaking under the mask. And this is how it came out on the model, with the SDW shading colors. Do not remove the masking now. With more patifix worms we will carve the place for the next color inside the olive green. And once again, the spots to be masked are marked in advance with small pieces of tape. That is the point of the progressive masking. Colors are overlapped. This way you easily get that effect of interlaced, wars and camouflage scheme. The second camouflage color to be painted is the most far from the others in terms of hue and lightness. 
and it will be the dark red-brown mix. Obtained with red-brown, chocolate-brown and crystal lock for the SDW shading colors. Or with red, ochre, chocolate and water for the essential colors. And we can start spraying the dark red-brown mix. Once the paint has dried, remove the masking, and here it is. Now that you have seen the coloring with both types of paint, the SDW shading colors, or the essential colors, from now on we will proceed with the weathering directly on the model. See you at the next episode.